Hi there, and welcome to the 53rd Octoprint on Air, as usual with your host, Gina Heuske. And uh, yeah, welcome to this slightly changed uh, approach to Octoprint on Air. You will probably not notice it immediately, but uh, contrary to the past ones, this one is no longer live stream. And this is also a change that I'm going to go forward with. Um, the thing was that, um, yeah, organizing these monthly or roughly monthly live streams in order to do these Octoprint on Air broadcasts as broadcasts became more and more stressful and put uh, more and more uh, overhead uh, on my shoulders. And um, considering that not really many usually watch them even live, I... Um, pretty much ask on Patreon if it would be okay for people if I just turned the uh, turned Octoprint on Air into a bit of a split approach. So Octoprint on Air uh, itself was a devlog combined with a Q&A section and the Q&A section was the reason that this was done live. And uh, after talking about that with my patrons, uh, we are now going instead with a pure devlog for Octoprint on Air and we'll move the Q&A segment into something that will basically basically be done on, on a longer interval. I'm thinking about something like every three months or so, if there are questions, because this was another problem. Recently, there usually were no questions anymore um, from people that they wanted to see answered here. So um, yeah, the, the idea here is to simply split things up, do the stressful thing less often and uh, allow me to do the devlog part um, yeah, with less overhead, with less less pressure. Because, yeah, I, I don't know if you've ever done a live stream in your life, but uh, it is, even if you've done it countless times already, it's always a bit stressful because will the hardware play, play along? Will your ISP decide to explode right in this very moment and cut off your internet? Will someone decide to mow their lawn right under your window? Good. I mean, in my particular case, this is a bit less likely because there is no lawn un under my office window. But um, on the other hand, then I have this Catholic church uh, a couple of hundred meters away that sometimes starts tolling the bells even outside of their normal schedule. So um, all of these things that you then stress over and keep stressing over over the whole duration of the uh, live stream. And yeah, frankly, just doing this as a recording, which I can, if push comes to shove, just pause and continue later if there is some really, really loud noise out there, makes things way, way easier. Um, and and less uh, intense as well. So this is what I'm going to do from now on. Um, yeah, with the general approach uh, to these, there, there is not going to be any change because uh, I figured I would just do what I've always been doing. I would just talk to you uh, free form, basically based on a bunch of points that I collected beforehand and just do things pretty much in a one take as long as the aforementioned factors allow for that. And so there's not going to be much uh, much visible change really, apart from the fact that the Q&A section will fall away and be moved to its own kind of thing. And that is pretty much that. So uh, yeah, welcome to Octoprint on Air 53. What are we going to talk about today? Uh, well, the usual, really. Uh, I will tell you what I've been up to. I will tell you what the next steps are going to be. Then we'll have a quick look at the stats and then that will already be it. Um, so without further ado, let's start right and uh, dive into what have I been what I have been up to. Uh, you probably all noticed that uh, on June 27th, uh, Octoprint 1.9.1 was released, so the first bug fix release for the 1.9 release. And uh, yeah, I already mentioned that in the last Octoprint on Air that I was planning on doing this. And yeah, I've done it. <laughs> uh, it contains some fixes for G-Code viewer uh, issues that crept in during the big refactoring uh, that happened with 1.9. And it also contained fixes for some other small things that got noticed uh, only after the long release candidate phase on 1.9. And I also did a small logic change 
Um, so with one nine octoprints behavior when connecting to the printer changed such that if a cer certain flag was set, octoprint would not try to query the li file list from the uh, from the printer's SD card until it had received its capability report, because that way it could um, form that query of the file list in a way that it would get all of the metadata instead of just the standard set of metadata, basically including long names and such. And um, so one nine shipped with this flag being disabled because I wanted to err on the side of caution, but then someone uh, opened an, uh, a feature request to switch this over to true. And after thinking about it some more, I realized, you know, most of the, um, most of the, of the firmwares out there now actually do send out a capability report. So it, is probably safe to just um, ship with that being enabled by default. And if someone really runs into an issue so that M20 will not automatically be sent anymore because their firmware happens to be one of the small handful of firmwares which do not send a capability report on Connect, yeah, I mean, then they can still switch it off again and things will behave like they did before. Um, okay, and then on July 18th, uh, I also released 1.9.2 and that was a bit less planned than 1.9.1 and pretty much became necessary due to a compatibility issue of a third party dependency, which in turn had um, so, uh, so a compatibility issue of a third party dependency with one of its own dependencies. So I needed to make sure that we pull in a newer version of said third party dependency that would not crash and burn due to another, basically a third party's third party dependency having uh, been updated. So that was fun, utterly unplanned for and still done within 24 hours, I think, of the issue uh, creeping up. And since I was rolling out a release anyhow, I also included some fixes that didn't make it into 1.9.1 because frankly, I simply forgot to include them uh, since they had to be backported from the maintenance branch. And that were, uh, so first of all, a workaround for an issue with uh, with the password hashing under uh, ROC64, uh, yeah, under ROC64 um, uh, systems. For some reason, the um, Aragon2 password hashing algorithm would not work on those, but without really throwing an error. So what would happen there would be, you would hash a password, it would say, yeah, uh, everything is great. And then you would try to verify a password hash and it would just silently always fail. Um, and that is obviously not helpful. Someone reported that and also already sent in the PR for that. So that got merged and now also backported to 1.9. Really, really nice. Um, and uh, the other thing was that there was uh, a bug with the HTTP header software update check, uh, which, yeah, pretty much saw a refactoring, but uh, an impar in, 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 in only a partial refactoring. Apparently I missed something and that led to that update type no longer working pro correctly. And that is also now been fixed in 1.9.2. Yeah, so two releases, what else? Um, uh, I also mentioned in the last one that I wanted to see to that I migrated the new camera stack. So the, the Octopi up to date image with the new camera stack that is camera streamer based over to using the binary package that packages that are now produced by the camera streamer uh, maintainer himself. And that is also something that I did. So I had to put in a transient image, a uh, transient package for that. And uh, we also, I also had to work together with uh, IUFAN, the maintainer, to um, modify the package slightly uh, on their end so that, um, uh, yeah, so that Debian would be happy in all upgrade scenarios. And if Debian is happy, Raspbian is happy as well. So that was needed for that. And that worked nice. Um, but uh, yeah, then it turned out I still needed to build things a bit on my end because, uh, though now with, with his approach, not mine, um, because uh, yeah, there were some Lib Camera Zero updates uh, lately. And the problem with Lib Camera Zero updates is that they happily break their own um, application binary interface on these. So we have to recompile camera streamer every single time for that. And yeah, so far this was happen, hap, happening. This was happening. This was happening. 
this was happening. That sounds so so weird. Uh, this was being done manually. Um, and what I now did after this most recent issue with this uh, is that I um, yeah set up basically some automation workflows that would check the uh, the repositories of Respian every I think an hour or so check if there is a new lib camera version than before and if so trigger a rebuild which in turn then will also trigger um, uh, a pull request against uh, app.octoprint.org so that once I merge that um, the the new package version with new with compatibility to the latest lib camera zero would then also be available for everyone who uh, at this point decides to issue an apt uh, dist upgrade um, yeah it's sadly still a bit meh because I would certainly prefer if we did not have to rebuild a camera streamer every single time that a new lip camera update is released. But yeah, they just break stuff on every update or every second update. And uh, until things stabilize a bit more there, which I hope they will in the long term, I don't really see a solution other than yeah, monitoring and rebuilding as fast as possible apart from maybe trying to figure out if we can build statically a build lib camera zero which would solve this problem possibly causing other problems i have no idea um, but yeah that is something that i might find the time someday to look into and if not maybe someone else will um, because yeah Right now, it's a bit sad that things are the way they are. And yeah, uh, I've uh, in any case, I've uh, started the process of ho hopefully getting this fully automated workflow merged into the official camera streamer repo um, so that I do not have to do this stuff myself uh, on, on, on Octoprint's repo or on Octoprint's fork because, yeah, I would prefer if things were... Uh, running more smoothly upstream in that regard and I'm happy to contribute them. They now just have to be merged. So let's hope for the best that this will happen soon. Um, yeah, uh, another thing that I mentioned last time that I wanted to uh, do next is uh, finally get back on working on the docs migration. So as a bit of a reminder, um, Octoprint's documentation currently is written in um, Sphinx and restructure text and it is a bit of a nightmare to work in that. I want to improve the documentation and I want to do more of a brain dump basically into that um, to have more of the stuff that lives up here uh, about how Octoprint works together, how firmware stuff works, uh, what parts in Octoprint do what and such live in the documentation. But for that, I first need to make sure that it is less of a nightmare to actually document things. And so the idea that I had around this time last year was to migrate over to make docs. Uh, made some, yeah, made some huge steps towards that. And then, yeah, life happened once again. And <laughs> Uh, the irregular Octoprint maintenance needed more um, needed more more time than planned, and so that had been on the back burner for a long while now. But now finally, I uh, got back into it, and uh, yeah, built built some tooling um, and uh, spent several days now um, slowly but steadily <laughs> migrating all the API docs from Restructure Text to Markdown, which is surprisingly. Uh, less mindless work than I thought it would be because I mostly have used uh, the Google Docs format, uh, not, not Google Docs, the product, but um, Google has some um, certain way of document documenting their APIs. And I have already used this uh, almost everywhere. And that makes it quite easy to migrate over now because make docs or, or rather make docs strings, which I use to extract the API documentation, um, supports this as well. And um, yeah, I still needed some put, some tooling for Pydantic uh, schema generation and for some, yeah, some other things here and there. And yeah, building that was kind of fun as well. So hooray. Um, 
And uh, yeah, one of the biggest hurdles really where I was quite afraid of having to port that because there was a lot of restructured pros basically in there that I needed to convert to Markdown was the uh, plug-in mix-in documentation. And I'm happy to report that as of a couple of days ago, this now has been done completely. And I just figured I would just show you um, uh, how things look now. Uh, if I can find the switch to switch you over. Okay, so um, yeah, if we go to code reference and then to, yeah, by the way, uh, the new docs, uh, if you want to take a look at how things are coming together, uh, you can find them at makedocs.octoprint.org. This is just a temporary domain. I'm going to move that over to docs.octoprint.org once I'm done. But for now, this is where they live. And yeah, code reference lives here and under types we have all of the uh, mix-ins documented, including the template plugin with some images, with all of the the, 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 the pros here that, that tells you of the various template types, all of this migrated, examples provided, and such and such. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy how all of this is uh, shaping out to be. Also works better on mobile now. And uh, it is way faster to write things in Markdown, really. Um, we also have this. I, I might have already shown you this uh, a bunch of months ago because this is something that uh, was already working very well last year this time, um, which is the new um, fully generated documentation of the configuration file. Um, so all of this that is here, all of these tables, all of these example uh, YAML snippets, all of this gets fully generated from the source. So there is no more sync work needed to keep um, the documentation updated with the source. And that is really, really nice. And this is something that I also want to see if I cannot achieve it maybe for the HTTP API, for the REST API docs. Um, there is not much here yet. Um, but at least these things are also already important that really needs some more love to look better but um yeah it's it's starting to come together and uh, especially this part here is what i'm currently working on to just get it over with get all of this this reference ported over because at that point it will be much more usable and a huge chunk of all the work will have been done the the rest here i can i can pretty much yeah, I can, I can mostly just automate that, do some search and replace and such to move over the um, the restructured te text from the from the old docs, which is just prose files like explanation of hooks and such. I can just move that over more or less, yeah, uh, easily in 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 an automated way or in a, a semi-automated way. But all of this stuff here that is uh, some detail work that is needed in the uh, in the doc strings in the code as itself. And yeah, so that is what I'm currently doing. Uh, in between all of the usual stuff, of course, but yeah, uh, just so that you have an idea. Yeah, and uh, another thing that I also did was um, also mentioned last time, I think at least, is uh, yesterday, you, you might just have seen there that I'm recording this on August the 1st. So yesterday uh, on, on July 31st, I uh, pushed out a new release of the Pi support plugin, which I had planned to do since May now, but always something more pressing happened. Um, and that now finally shows the Octopay up, uh, Octopi up, up to date uh, build number in the footer if Octoprint is running on an Octopi up-to-date build and that will hopefully make it easier for people to identify first of all which build they are on um, and also uh, compare that with the list of, uh, of, of releases of Octopi up-to-date marked as camera streamer or as, 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 yeah, as with the new camera um, stack uh, so that they know which stack they are on so I might also still just detect that somehow and display it as well. And um, uh, yeah, I've also modified the about dialog in that case slightly so that it is crystal, crystal clear that you're running on an Octopi up-to-date build and not on an Octo on, an, on a vanilla Octopi build. 
Um, and the reason for this was that people basically just got confused that after new camera stack image was added, they didn't know which version they were running anymore. And uh, now it is hopefully easier for users to see that, um, to match that up against any tickets that they are submitting. And uh, yeah, so it's just basically a small cosmetic change, but hopefully with a huge impact with regards to being clear on what is running there, which version is this and yeah. Okay, so that is what I have been up to. Um, what are the next steps? So um, first of all, well, as I mentioned, lots more work on the docs migration. Still need to do quite some RP docs, need to figure out a way to do the HTTPI, so the REST API docs. I'm, I'm still hoping that I can also somehow extract these from doc strings and some, uh, some, some schema definitions. Um, I'll have to look if I can somehow find something for for that to work. We'll see. Um, so that is going to be something that will keep me busy probably for two more weeks. And then in two weeks time, I will be at Chaos Communication Camp. Woohoo! Um, uh, I will be there from August 14th until August 19th and then probably take a few days off after that because usually these camps are intense AF. Um, uh, so if you should happen to also be there among the other couple of thousand people who will be there, um, hit me up. I will have stickers with me and also some other goodies. So I still have some buttons and such. Um, uh, I also still plan to do a meetup there because the meetup at CCC camp 2019 of Octoprint users was quite a lot of fun and a ton of people showed up there and that was really, really nice to see so many of you and talk to so many of you. Um, and I might also try to talk Mitty Yu from Mainsail into joining that, who is also going to be at camp. Um, the only problem is that so far I have not yet figured out how to yeah, basically register such a meetup as a self-organized session. There used to be a wiki for that. There is no longer. There is now some weird hub software that I have not yet figured out how to use. So um, if you happen to be at camp, if you do not want to miss a meetup uh, that might happen, that is very likely to happen, uh, if people actually show up, that is, um, then uh, best keep an eye on Octoprint's official Mastodon account, which is linked on Octoprint's uh, website in the footer. Uh, but I can also tell it again as well here. That is uh, if, uh, basically um, octoprint at fostodon.org. Or uh, alternatively, and or in addition, also my own uh, Mastodon account, which is uh, fuzletchaos.social. So, um, or alternatively, gina at octoprint.org will also uh, if you enter that into your Mastodon client and look for that user, that will also make you uh, stumble over my account. Yeah, um, so keep an eye on that if you do not want to miss it, because I do not really know how else to propagate that right now. And uh, yeah, I think that people who are going to attend camp will most likely also be aware about Mastodon and know how to use that. Um, sorry. Uh, but I am no longer on Twitter, so there will be no notification on there about when and where. Um, and maybe I will also still get the uh, self-organized session stuff parsed and grokked again uh, 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 enough to figure things out there. Okay. So, yeah. And then we will hopefully already see each other again. So that is going to be the next steps, basically, for the next three to four weeks. Um, okay, with that being said, uh, next we will take a quick look at the stats. So for this, I'm going to switch you over again to, over to my screen here. And so this is the public stat view that you might already know, uh, data.octoprint.org. And um, I found something funny in there, and you might also be seeing it right now or looking at it right now. And this is these weird spikes here on uh yeah on 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 five or maybe even six consecutive days yeah six consecutive days starting on july 20th ending on july 25th and each day at around uh this is 20 uh 20 or 100 uh, but uh, um, cest so 1800 uh, utc um 
And yeah, so that struck me as a bit weird. So I went over here, which is uh, the general full blown view with the map still broken. Sorry, I haven't gotten around to actually repairing that. And there I saw this little spike here, which is the one from um, July 25th. And I see there that there is a sudden spike from uh, 1.1k to 1.7, almost 1.7k of instances of Octoprint 172, which is quite old now. Um, so I got even more curious and narrowed things down further on that. And so now here you have the individual version statistics with the version, version distribution specifically for Octoprint 1.72. And there we see these spikes. And I have absolutely no clue what was going on there. If you know, then please tell me. Um, but yeah, I found this quite interesting. It looks like someone was experimenting with spawning 9,000 instances within two hours or so and then shutting them off again on Octoprint 172, which is really, really weird. And yeah, so this drop is probably the upgrade uh, after 192 launched. Um, and people finally moved away from 172. And we also returned to this quite normal level over here. But in between, someone was going nuts. And yeah, curious finding. No idea what was going on there. I mean, not, normally I would say someone was, was experimenting with a farm setup, but it, with 172, which, ooh, I don't even know right now when that was released, but I think 2021 or so. So that is quite old. Could actually be the last one maybe that ran Python 2. Uh, and speaking about Python 2, um, yeah, the Python 3 um, stats were also doing really weird things during that time. I, um, yeah, consider me somewhat confused about this because it looks like someone was launching 172 under Python 3. And yeah, I have no idea. It's weird things are weird if you know why please tell me if you know no guessing please or rather i mean of course you can also guess but yeah um i would really like to know i i can guess myself um yeah but yeah other than that no no real change no real uh, no real weird stuff the usual lump in activity during the summer months um and uh, yeah, no, no, no huge changes in 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 anything really. Uh, also, the total time printed is pretty stable. That is usual what I see in within seven days. And uh, yeah, things are pretty normal. Nothing weird other than those spikes and this weird Python three bumps there. By the way, we are back at 93% Python 3 and 7% Python 2 um, usage. I think at some point we actually were at 94 and 6, but I might have dreamt that. In any case, those 7% of people still running Octoprint on Python 2, please upgrade. It is easy. We made it as easy as we possibly could. Uh, there is a migration script for some versions of Octopi, and if that doesn't work, back up, restore, done. Um, yeah, because Python 2 has been end of life now for three years, three and a half years. There, it's, it's, it's dead. Stop using it, please. Actually, Python 3.7 is soon going to go the way of the dodo, and I'm not yet sure how to work uh, or how to approach that, because frankly, I would love to drop support for Python 3.7 as it would open up a whole bunch of new fancy language features that I could then utilize in Octoprint's core that would make development even easier. But on the other hand, some people on oldish, oldish installations out there would then no longer be able to run it either. So I'm trying to hold my horses here. But uh, yeah, there's so much fancy new stuff coming to Python. And yeah, I just want to be able to use it. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, 
that was that, I think. Uh, we are at, yeah, roughly half an hour now with this, and this pretty much matches the usual uh, length of the segment uh, of the of the whole uh, devlog part of Octoprint on Air without the Q&A. So, uh, yay, see, I told you, not, not that big of a change, all in all. Um, yeah, so um, thanks for being here. I hope this was interesting, and I'll see that I do another one of these within a month, or, or rather next month. Um, I'll, I'll try to squeeze it in between camp and my vacation um, uh, in September, I think it's September, so still some time there. Um, and until then, uh, please stay healthy and happy printing. Bye bye.